Hello, my name is Tamara Bush, a physician liaison at Mayo Clinic. Thank you for viewing our discussion on the topic of melanoma treatment at Mayo Clinic. Identifying the melanoma stage, depth, and severity is critical for selecting the most appropriate treatment combination. Mayo Clinic doctors have access to the latest in diagnostic methods and treatment innovations to improve care for patients with melanoma. Understanding the complexities of melanoma is achievable through an openly collaborative effort by dedicated experts. I am joined by my colleagues, Dr. Alexander Mavis, a dermatologist, Dr. Tina Hyken, a surgical oncologist, and Dr. Spedevere Markovic, a medical oncologist, who have an integrated clinical practice for patients that have been diagnosed with melanoma. Let's begin our conversation. Dr. Mavis, from your perspective as a dermatologist, would you discuss the melanoma diagnostic methods for patients offered at Mayo Clinic within your practice? In addition, would you talk about your research of genomic profiling of melanoma being done at Mayo Clinic? Yes, uh, thank you, Tammy. Um, I wanted to uh, start off by saying that at Mayo Clinic, we really try very hard to tailor melanoma treatments to each individual patient. And so one key question that we need to address immediately at diagnosis is, you know, how dangerous do we think this cancer is? What is the likelihood of this melanoma metastasizing and creating widespread disease? And how aggressive do we need to be uh, with treatment? So in dermatology, um, we diagnose a lot of melanomas every year, but we know that not all of these melanomas are actually dangerous. In fact, like most of these melanomas we diagnose, they will never lead to problems and are just cured by, you know, local excision. And so the question is, how do we find the ones that need our attention? Um, perhaps need a referral to Dr. Heiken for lymph node surgery or, you know, even treatment with powerful new immunotherapy drugs that are administered by Dr. Markovic. And the answer to that is that we mostly re rely on a very simple concept, the idea of tumor invasion depth. So in other words, the deeper melanoma is grown into the skin, the higher the risk of having a bad outcome. And so we call the measurement of this invasion depth breast thickness. And if breast thickness is beyond a certain threshold, we worry about a bad outcome. So the concept of breast thickness was actually developed in the late 1960s. And you know, we've come a long way since in uh, refining our understanding of cancer at the molecular level. And we now have the technology to measure molecular changes in tumor tissue and, and just routinely collected biopsy tissue. And so at Mayo Clinic, we developed a test called the Merlin assay that quantifies molecular changes in tumor tissue and can be used to better differentiate between low and high risk melanoma than breast thickness alone. And so in other words, if you have a melanoma that we would call higher risk by the traditional breast thickness approach, the Merlin assay may reclassify this lesion as low risk because it not only takes into account breast thickness, but also molecular data that was previously unattainable. And so this ability to better, as we call it, risk stratify melanoma by a Merlin, a Merlin testing can help patients avoid unnecessary procedures such as sentinel lymph node biopsies. But for a test like the Merlin assay to be widely accept, accepted by the medical community, it needs to be validated extensively in, in thousands of patients. Just like back in the 60s and 70s, Dr. Bressler had to validate his method. And so we have therefore initiated this you know, extensive validation program, which is headed by Dr. Heiken. Thank you, Dr. Mavis. Dr. Heiken, as a surgical oncologist, clinical trials work in tandem with your surgical practice. How do patients with early and advanced stage melanoma benefit from the combination of these innovative treatments? Thanks so much, Tammy. Um, it's great to join my colleagues here and have an opportunity to talk a little bit about our practice. So for our practice, um, we see patients uh, with early stage disease to late stage disease. And really the secret uh, to our ability to care uh, for these melanoma patients is our team-based approach. So some are practitioners who the patients will meet. And these are dermatologists, radiation oncologists, medical oncologists, and surgical oncologists like myself. 
and then some who work more behind the scenes, such as some of our expert radiology colleagues and pathology colleagues, who really help us provide the best possible care to patients. So our own group uh, includes a specialty trained uh, melanoma surgical oncologist, and we have come up with a number of innovations uh, along with our colleagues to try and minimize the side effects of treatment so that when it's required, uh, we can do things in a minimally invasive way uh, with some innovative techniques to really minimize long-term effects. Um, most importantly here, we really have this combination of great facilities and an expert um, medical staff that allows us to provide the uh, most accurate and precise uh, test results, uh, not just uh, performing testing and doing treatment, but doing both uh, in a really exemplary fashion. And some things that appear to be simple are actually more complex than they appear and really de depend on us working hand in hand with our colleagues. So in terms of clinical trials, uh, the things that uh, the trial that Dr. Mavis mentioned, the Merlin 01 trial is one that we were fortunate to uh, help initiate and along with seven other U.S. Uh, melanoma centers to validate this approach to looking at a combination of clinical and genomic factors to figure out which of our patients with inter th uh, intermediate thickness melanoma who have no clinical evidence of spread of the melanoma to the lymph nodes really might benefit from surgical staging of their disease in which patients really don't need it and might avoid it. Uh, patients who are having melanoma sentinel lymph node surgery here at Mayo Rochester or in Mayo, Florida or Mayo, Arizona are all eligible uh, to participate in the study. And some of the things that we'll be looking at along with the validation component are some scientific correlatives and some patient reported outcomes work. Kind of at the other end of the spectrum of our practice for patients who have the opposite of that, uh, clinically evident disease that's already gone to the lymph nodes, we're working with other medical oncology colleagues um, and a study that's open at University of Minnesota and Mayo, Florida and Mayo, Rochester called NeoActivate. And in this study, we're really looking at these novel combinations of immunotherapy uh, based on the hypothesis that some immunotherapy given for a short period of time before surgery may actually be more effective in developing a very precise a tumor specific response for the patient and improving patient outcomes compared to during doing a potentially curative operation first and then giving a year of treatment afterward. It also gives us an opportunity to shorten the treatment time for patients uh, and uh, to do some scientific research along with this. So one of the things that we're looking at is technical and that's looking at whether or not the lymph node that's originally biopsied to establish the diagnosis might be a great barometer of the disease status of that whole area of lymph nodes, and therefore might be used in the future to help us further de-escalate surgical treatment. And secondly, we're doing a lot of blood and tissue and microbiome-based assays to help us try and sort out why do some patients have a great response to treatment while other patients who seem to be quite similar don't? Why do some patients have significant toxicities of some of these treatments that are life-saving, while others have very, very minor effects or none? And you know what's going on here so that we might uh, develop really precise therapies and minimize the toxicity of these treatments? So what's really uh, exemplary and really great uh, for someone like me working here is to work with such intelligent and committed colleagues uh, both clinicians and scientists, and sometimes um, who wear both hats, are really committed to rapid advancement and sort of state of the science work and then bringing that right back to the bedside because we're really all aligned in just uh, trying to improve care for individual melanoma patients. So thanks for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you, Dr. Hyken. Dr. Markovic, as a medical oncologist, would you, you work closely with Melanoma Research Program at Mayo Clinic. Would you talk about the program and how this research translates into clinical care for the patient? Thank you, Tammy, for the opportunity to, uh, to speak with me today and for sharing this beautiful menu with us to discuss the whole practice. Uh, I've had the pleasure of being associated with the Melanoma program since its inception 20 years ago. And I'm truly proud and privileged to, to work with such brilliant colleagues as Dr. Heichen. Over the years, uh, what we've tried to do is to provide the best care of our patients 
using what has historically been the Mayo model of care. We all work together. We all share our experiences. We build on our experiences to create the best possible treatment option that we can come up with for every new patient that comes into our care. We also apply the same collaborative effort with colleagues that do research and not only take care of patients. Many of us are, are trained both as scientists and as physicians, and the application of that scientific knowledge into the care of patients every day is something that we truly find gratifying and the aim of our very scientific work. There are many examples of this that I would just simply like to share with you, a few that, that come to mind. For instance, Dr. Jeff Johnson and Dr. Matthew Block work together. Dr. Johnson is a nuclear medicine expert, someone who works behind the scenes in our practice, who has developed a peptide that will directly bind to neuronal cells to make a better scanner. If this peptide works to identify cancer cells better, we can add to it therapeutic radioactive substances that will then treat the melanoma inside. Dr. Lauren Devlin studies, is an ophthalmologist. She studies melanoma of the eye. Dr. Robert McWilliams, a dear friend of mine, studies melanoma of the mucosal origins, which is uniquely difficult to treat and is currently preparing a large national study. Dr. James Jacob, uh, our surgical oncology colleague, studies in transit melanoma metastasis when the melanoma jumps from one lymph channel to the other, spreading throughout the skin. He has devised a method with collaborators across the country to use a device through which he can deliver therapy and treat the tumor. And finally, my, my dear friend, Dr. Tobias Piker, who is a pulmonologist, someone that we don't normally see in our practice, who is devising a method to deliver immune therapy by inhalation, not just in the vein, to try to reset the immune system's ability to recognize cancer. There are many other examples, but in the interest of time, all I would say is that I've, I've felt privileged and honored for the last 22 years to work with such an amazing one thing is for sure, we come to work in order to make our patients better with this horrible disease that we face. So with that, I'll thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Markovic. We would like to conclude by saying thank you for reviewing our discussion about the integrative practice for the treatment of melanoma at Mayo Clinic.